I have two main loves, bow hunting elk and my family. And on this hunt, we're bringing them together. September is the month that my entire year revolves around. It marks the changing of the seasons and the beginning of the time when I'm most in my element. Hunting season is here. My annual pilgrimage to the high country in search of elk has marked this beginning since I moved to Idaho over a decade ago. But this season is going to be different. This season, the whole family's going. Although Koi and Finn have been hunting with me many times before, this is going to mark their first extended trip. With the entire month stretched out before us and no commitments dragging us back, there's no telling how long we're going to be out. Whether an old friend or your own son, there's nothing quite like time in the woods to truly come to know someone. Although everyone would enjoy their time in camp immensely, Finn would really shine in his desire to tag along and his willingness to push himself in order to do so. But more on that later. For now, we've got to find some milk. So this is the first afternoon out. I kind of just hung around camp this morning. Just wanted to make sure everybody was settled before I took off. First time I ever came west, I was probably 14, 15. We went to Wyoming for the high school rodeo finals. And I can remember like seeing the mule deer, pronghorns, all of that stuff out in those open grasslands. And I thought to myself, my God, the hunting would be so easy because I came from, I mean, I grew up hunting in the southeast where you don't see animals like that. You just, I mean, they, the habitat just doesn't allow it. But once I moved out here, I quickly came to realize that there's a big difference between seeing them and getting within bow shot of them. Well, I've seen a couple elk scattered around, but nothing that's got me too awful excited. I think tomorrow morning I'm just going to default back to the plan that I always have when I'm really just at a loss for what to do, and that's go and sit in a draw over here across the valley where I shot the first elk that I ever killed down here, a spike a couple years ago. And they just kind of filter up through that draw up into their bedding area, kind of mid-morning. The problem with that is it's a big area and they they're kind of just scattered and so you know it's it's kind of just luck of the draw if one comes close enough to get a shot you you almost always see elk in there but they might be you know 100 yards away this landscape and glass these elk up from a mile away sometimes across these valleys you know you're you're looking at a massive area and then consider that to kill one of these things you have to find yourself in that exact intersection where man elk and arrow all come together and you, you come out here day after day and things just don't work out. 
it can start to get a little depressing. <laughs> but if you stay with it day after day, you know, things eventually line up and you find that point, you find that intersection in this vast landscape. You find yourself at that spot. Then you gotta make the shot. was a bugle right there. God, I love that. I freaking love that sound. As a fawn cue, the first bugle of the season rings through the timber, and that unlikely intersection seems a little nearer, but still somehow lost amongst the dark timber that covers this mountainside. What is he going to do? Let's find out. But there is one thing certain, that most ancient of games has begun. Over the next 10 days, I put in my time, settling into that familiar September grind of up early and out late. Miles upon miles, thousands of feet gained and lost every day, rain and snow and the stillness of the mountain.
despite my persistence, I was having a heck of a time finding a bull that wanted to play my game. Every call, every bugle, met with a depressing silence. It wasn't until later in the season that I discovered why. Hunting elk in the presence of wolves is a whole different ball game. It isn't that they leave, but that they up their game. When all elk have to do is evade sloppy human hunters, they let their guard down. But when wolves are around, nothing goes unnoticed. Although I love the heart-pounding excitement of calling in a hot bull, I'm not going to beat my head against the wall if it's just not happening. Quiet Elk call for a page from the Whitetail Hunter's Handbook. Figure out where they're going and get there first. But with a seven-year-old, you've got precisely the amount of time it takes to eat an apple before you've got to get moving. All these big rocks on the ground right here. Yeah. Where do you think those came from? That's right, they came from up there. So, do you think it would be a good idea to stay in here and sleep in here? No, no. big rock might fall on you. Two far away they were. It was getting too late. <coughs> oh, 
Right. What else did we find? Okay. <gasps> no, you did not. Dad showed them. You saw like you went. Was there a bear in it? No. No. Was there we a mountain? Was there a mountain lion in it? No. no. Mice. Mice. We don't like mice. Pack, there were pack rats in there. Ew. Finn and I had so much fun exploring those caves, we decided to hike up to one of the lakes on, the buddy. next day Lead to see way. if we could what find some trout. This way, that's the trail numbers. On the way back down from the lake, I happened to see a few elk emerging from a known bedding area. Betting that they would feed on the open slopes all night and return there in the morning, I got up super early and taking advantage of the early morning thermals, slipped into the area and waited.
<clears throat> I thought when I saw where that arrow went, I thought that was a perfect behind the shoulder double long. <sighs> but there's freaking gut all over this freaking arrow. Oh, I cannot freaking believe that. <sighs> My guess is she's going to be bedded up. How did I? <laughs> oh. So there's uh, pretty much no blood. Um, found a place where she was, when I heard her down below, she was just stopped down there. I could hear her breathing, but she dropped a bunch of blood right there and clotted up. And uh, I've in I've tracked her probably, I don't know, half a mile or so. And she went into a little patch of timber here. So it's only been a little over two hours since I shot her. And so I'm just gonna chill up here for a while before I get down into that patch of timber because I hope that she's bedded down there. I must, I just, the only thing I can think is she was moving when I shot, I just didn't lead. Just hit her a little, a little bit too far back. All right, so change of plans. I've been sitting here thinking about it and you know, I, I don't know what to think about the hit. Uh, she could be sitting down there in the draw dead or she could be well alive. And so it's a long way down to camp and a long way back up, but I don't wanna take any chances of bumping this cow out and having her go who, who knows where. I know where she's at now. And so what I'm gonna do is go back down to camp grab Liz and Chuck. I'm gonna bring Chuck back up here. I'm gonna set him in this saddle right behind me. So when I check, when I track this cow into this patch of timber, I suspect if she is still alive, she's gonna to try to come through this saddle right here. And so uh, I'm gonna have Liz go over to this next knob. Uh, if she happens to go a different way or get past Chuck, I'll just have her sitting up there um, watching and just seeing where she goes so I don't have to spend the next eight hours tracking this cow down so that's the plan hey, um, did you get one? I shot one but I didn't make a very good shot we gotta go we gotta go find her can I Where's, which way did she go You see that, you see that down log right there with all the stuff inside of it? No, up here, uphill from her. Don't go past that, okay? Go ahead. The next one. Wait 
think about that. <laughs> we gonna eat tenderloins tonight? This big cow will keep us in healthy organic meat for a while, and we're thankful to get it. By the time we finish the cleaning, a hands-on lesson in anatomy, and filming for a field dressing tutorial, it was getting pretty late. We packed out what we could and hung the rest for the next day. Jays. What do you think they're doing up there? Eating our um, elk. You think they're on the carcass? Yeah. <laughs> Look here. Look. You see how the all the soil around it is kind of wet a little bit? Yeah. And then there's dry right here? So what do you think? Why do you think that is? Because something just went through here. Something just went through here. What do you think it was? Hey, elk. What? Who just went up in front of us? Well, Lily. Those are Lily's tracks. <laughs> see where? Look! Look! See where she just walked? See all that dry dirt that she got out? It's because it was raining last night. Elk hunting isn't generally thought of as a family-friendly endeavor, and honestly, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. But despite things taking a little longer, it was time well spent, for in the end, time is our most precious commodity, and I couldn't think of any better way to spend it. I could go around the world, finest diamonds, precious pearls, they'd all turn to dust in my hand. Seven wonder city streets, ocean air and mountain peaks They are not the finest in the land Much more than these I have seen firsthand There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing There ain't nothing like coming home to you And no matter where I go and no matter what I do There ain't nothing like coming home Brothers laugh and lovers cry Hold each other up when we can't stand Back home with my family It's right there where I want to be It's all I need to be a rich man There ain't nothing There ain't nothing There ain't nothing like coming home to you And no matter where I go And no matter what I do
Yeah, sure. Thanks. I left this in the dehydrator too long. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty dry. Freaking cardboard. Lost their lives going over the peanut butter bridge.